Namaste and welcome to my channel. I hope everybody is safe during this lockdown period. I know I haven't been posting too many videos, so I'm going to try and make up for them. Uh, the topic that I've selected today is a relatively boring one, but it is going to be a stepping stone for the coming videos. So it is going to consist of embryology of the pharyngeal arches or the branchial arches. And uh, this is an important topic for MBBS level, MRCS, plastic surgery examinations, other entrance examinations and all. Though there are not uh, many drawings and uh, diagrams involved in this, there is a lot of theory and cramming required. So I will give you a few mnemonics and tips to help you get through this and remember it easily. So first a little overview of what these pharyngeal or branchial arches are. So this is the basic diagram that we all see. Uh, when we open our embryology books and uh, for the record I will be taking the help of uh, embryology textbook by Inder Bear Singh which uh, in India is widely used. So uh, this is from where these pharyngeal or the branchial arches will develop and there are a total of six such arches out of which the fifth one will ultimately disappear and will not be seen further. So this is the rough diagram that we draw for the purpose of it. So here we can see um, that these arches will have an ectodermal that is an outer layer, a mesodermal or a mesenchymal central layer and an endodermal middle layer. So the uh, cleft that will be seen in between the two arches will be seen on the outer side and the pouch will be seen on the inner side that is the endodermal side. So now you can see there is number one, two, three, four, fifth one disappears which ultimately becomes the ultimo brinkle body hence the name and combines with the fourth arch and then we have the sixth one. The important thing uh, to take away from this diagram is the development of the external air which is the pinna. So from the first and the second brinkle arches three external protuberances which are called as the hillocks will develop from each arch. So 3 plus 3 that is 6 of these hillocks help to form the pinna that is the external ear and this external auditory meatus will come from this first cleft. Now the other derivatives is what we will be seeing from each arch which will consist of an arterial component, a nerve component and the skeletal and the muscular structures. So stay with me on this one. It looks a little complicated but it is not. That's why I'll take you through them one by one. So the first arch is also known as the mandibular arch. And this stands for Treacher Collins syndrome that I will explain later once we see all the structures that come from this arch. So the first arch is called the mandibular arch and the nerve that is involved with it is the trigeminal and mainly the mandibular division of the trigeminal. So mandibular matches. Now there is a good mnemonic that I had come through for the muscles which is my must aunt digests tension. So M is for the myelohyoid muscle, must which means good, enjoyable is for mastication, aunt digests is the anterior belly of digastric and tension. So the tensor villi palatini and the tensor tympani. The cartilages that develop from this first arch is the Michels cartilage which has the mandible, malleus and incus, MMI developing from it. The maxilla, so you can see the mandible, maxilla, most of the part of the facial bones come from this. The palatine, that's why it will be very important when we study cleft and the squamous part of the temporal bone. The other derivatives are the external auditory meatus, like we saw the development of the pinna with it, the eustachian tube. And again, mast and mast, that is the mastoid air cells. So artery is also easy to remember because we have the mandibular division, the mandibular arches and it's the maxillary artery here. So if you go through it, you'll see you come through mandible, mandible, maxilla, all of it quite repetitively throughout this first arch. That's how it's easy to remember the derivatives of this arch. Now the second arch is also known as the hyoid arch. And the facial nerve is the one that is related to it. So second will have a lot of S's in it. So second has derivatives stupid style dip facial expression. That is the stapedius style how hyoid dip is the digastric posterior belly. Anterior one was in the first arch 
and it's the facial nerve so muscles of facial expression stupid style dip facial expression now the cartilage associated with it is the rickett cartilage or the richard cartilage and this leads to the development of the stapedius so the stapedial bone here also and the stylohyoid so the styloid bone here the cartilage as well and the lesser cornua of the hyoid bone and ultimately the derivatives are the palatine uh, tonsils that come from here so do not get confused the palatine bones are in the first arch and the palatine tonsils are in the second so since we had stapedius over here over here but natural we have the stapedial artery here and since this is the hyoid arch we have the hyoid artery over here so that simplifies the second arch so from the plastic surgery point of view the first and the second arches are the most important for us which will we which will we will see when we read the cleft lip and palate embryology as well as the tessier's clefts so one of those things is the tcs that is the treacher collins syndrome also known as the first arch syndrome or mandibulofacial dysostosis we will see a little bit more about it when we see the tessier clefts then the third arch is associated with the glossopharyngeal nerve so since the glossopharyngeal nerve is there the stylopharyngeus is over here remember the stylohyoid has gone with the hyoid arch and the stylopharyngeus is the one where the glossopharyngeal nerve is involved now the lesser hyoid uh, bone that is the cornua went with the second arch so the greater cornua of the hyoid bone is with the third arch and along with this is the inferior parathyroids and the thymus the artery associated with it is the common carotid and the internal carotid now the remaining three arches are more important uh, where mbbs and entrance exams are concerned and um, the arteries you can see that from superficial to the deeper ones we keep coming like we are starting with the maxillary artery and ultimately we are going to end with the aorta and the pulmonary arteries so now the fourth arch so fourth and sixth actually both of them are related with the vagus the fourth one is related with the superior laryngeal nerve and here all the pharyngeal muscles are derived from it minus one which is the stylopharyngeus and all the palatine muscles are developed from it minus one that went above which was the tensor villi palatini there is another good mnemonic to remember for this uh, because you should know the muscles of the palate so all the muscles went to vagus all the muscles went to vagus that is the 10th nerve except for the tensed man that is the tensor villi palatini associated with the mandibular division of the trigeminal so remember that mnemonic for the palatine muscles also coming from the fourth arch is the cricothyroid muscle which is of the larynx the cartilage associated with it is the thyroid cartilage and since the inferior parathyroid went with the third arch the superior parathyroid is with the fourth arch remember that they flip and the ultimo brinkel body like i had mentioned comes and merges with the fourth one which is the remnant of the fifth arch so over here the arterial uh, relation is the arc of aorta and the right subclavian artery and finally we have the sixth arch again that is related with the vagus nerve and the recurrent laryngeal nerve so all the laryngeal muscles are from the sixth arch except for one which is a cricothyroid that went above in the fifth one Uh, sorry in the fourth one and the cartilage associated with the laryngeal muscles and the recurrent laryngeal nerve are obviously the laryngeal cartilages which are the cricoid arytenoid corniculate cuneiform cartilages thankfully we have nothing left over here so nothing to remember over here and ultimately the artery associated with it is a ductus arteriosus and pulmonary artery like i said from superficial to deep so that is all there is to know about the pharyngeal arches I think that sounds simpler and it will help us to get through the following videos. Thank you.